and it is recording! Hey everyone! Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is David O'Doherty and I am the writer of the Danger Is Everywhere book series. I just do the writing. My friend Chris Judge, he does the pictures, but he's not here. But maybe that's good because if he was here, he might start talking and his voice is quite boring. And then maybe you would fall asleep while you were watching this. And that's the opposite, I'll be honest, of what we want. Um, these books are about my next door neighbour, Dr. Noel Zone. And he lives just through there and he is a dangerologist. What is a dangerologist? A dangerologist is a person where you might see fun or excitement or adventure in the world. He just sees the possibility of terrible, awful things happening. For example, you go to the park, you're thinking, I mean, there's not much dangerous stuff that can happen in the park. Dr. Noel sees so many dangerous things that can happen in the park. For example, you're feeding the ducks. And what happens then? A killer whale jumps out of the pond and eats you. That's the sort of stuff that Dr. Noel, my neighbor, worries about. For example, you go into the bushes to find your bowl. And while you're in there, you get kidnapped by swans. That's the sort of thing that he thinks goes on in the world. Say you're playing with a frisbee, you're thinking, well, there's not much dangerous stuff that can happen with a frisbee. It's got smooth edge. Dr. Noel thinks you could easily be chopped in half by a frisbee. Sorry if that was too scary. I should have warned you at the start. So uh, what we're gonna do is read some of my favorite bits of these books. And if it's fun, and if you enjoy it, we might do another one, another time. But I think as this is the first one, it's a good idea to start by looking at the dangers of reading. Because Dr. No, he's, he's very worried about reading. He thinks there's so many awful things that could happen while reading. Uh, make sure you are reading in a safe place. That's very important, according to Dr. No. Examples of a safe place to read this book. One, in bed. Having checked underneath the bed for a sleeping tiger. I mean, I guess that does make sense. Uh, note, if you have a pet cat, make sure it isn't a tiger. We'll, that's something we'll be covering uh, later on in this episode. And he's put in, look, there's a, there's a picture just to see with the little tiger foot just sticking out. Two, another safe place to read a book as far as he's concerned, leaning against a tree or a bush. Uh, first, make sure it is a tree and not a huge Venus flytrap or other human eating plant. I mean, you know Venus flytrap, they're, they're about that size. Dr. Noel, you don't need to. Also, he's written examples of human eating plants here. A hungry hedge, that's a hedge that eats you. Chompy bamboo, that's a bamboo that grows so fast it grows around you and you're stuck inside it, like in prison. Or starving parsnips and they're vegetables that can eat you. Uh, three, another safe place to read this book is sitting in a chair. But he's written warning, sit up straight, do not slouch. Slouching is very bad for your back. Note also make sure that the chair is not on fire. I mean, that's, I think that's good advice. Before you sit anywhere, firstly, just check that it's not on fire. Examples of unsafe places to read this book. One, on a bicycle while being chased by wasps. Yep, that's, I guess that. Two, in a shark cage while dressed as a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, and sharks love sandwiches, he's written there. Yeah, yeah. and the, there's, there's even a picture there of, see there's a shark and there's Dr. Noel just in a cage dressed as a sandwich. Three, in a chair that is on fire. Yep, that is, that's a, that's a dangerous place. All right, Dr. Noel. Check for scorpions before you read any book. You probably think that reading books is a safe thing to do. Nobody has ever been injured while reading a book, you probably think. Wrong, 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 wrong multiplied by a million. If you think you're safe, then you've never heard of the page nine scorpion. 
an awful horrible bug that likes to wait on page nine of books. And then when you open that page, it leaps, so you turn, it leaps out onto your nose and attaches itself there. So from that moment on, you have to explain to everyone you meet that you didn't know about the page nine scorpion. And that's why it's there in the middle of your face, firing poison from its bum. <laughs> wow. How to check for the page nine scorpion. This is, Dr. Noel thinks you should do this just before you read any book. Uh, close the book slowly and put it on the ground or on the table and then whack the book like that so that if there was a page nine scorpion inside, so we'll go to page nine and see if there was. Wow, look, there was, but we have successfully uh, squished it. Uh, do not read this book too fast. That's his next warning. This book is full of fascinating information. You may find it so incredibly interesting that you whiz from page to page faster than any book you've ever read before. Beware, if you read it too fast outside on a hot day with the sun shining down, the whole book could burst into flames. So it's a good idea to have a fire extinguisher or a bucket of water beside you in case you smell burning or see smoke rising from the from the pages as you're going through it. Okay, that's that's his first book reading advice. I mean, it goes it goes into even more depth in the second book. He talks about uh, book reading equipment that you should wear before you consider reading a book. Reading goggles. Every year, hundreds of people go to hospital having been poked in the eye while reading books they didn't realise were pop-up books. Imagine how awful that is. You're reading a book. I'm really enjoying this nice book, you're thinking to yourself. It's just so relaxing and entertaining. I can't wait to turn the page and enjoy more. And then suddenly, doy -oy 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 suddenly your pop-up book bops you in the face. They shouldn't be called pop-up books. They should be called exploding terror machines. Oh my goodness. There's a, there's a picture there of a, a pop-up book just detonating into someone's a giraffe pop-up book how to check if a book is a pop-up book one put on your reading goggles two with the book facing away from you open each page in front of a soft cushion or pillow then if anything jumps out the very worst that can happen is the cushion pillow gets popped so what he wants you to do is go through the whole book page by page by page like this doctor no what to do if you find a pop-up book number one Dig a very deep hole. He does not like pop-up books at all. Two, place the book at the bottom of the hole. Three, fill in the hole. Four, plant a prickly bush on top of where the hole was. Five, put a family of very large angry eagles in that bush so that nobody ever goes near it again. I mean... And to get around the problem of the page nine scorpion, in this book, the second book of the series, see what Dr. Noel has done? He's got, can you read that? It's page eight. And then what's the next page right there? It's page 10. He, d he did away with page nine. Oh, Dr. Noel. Reading gloves. He thinks that's important too. As you can see, books are big and pointy and have very sharp pages. I mean, Dr. Noel, they're not that. He's He worries about F. Here's Dr. Noel making toast. He, this is how worried he is about everything. He wears a full space suit just when he's making toast. So reading gloves. Uh, books are big and pointy and have very sharp pages. In many ways, reading a book is like trying to wrestle a hedgehog kangaroo. <laughs> Note, I made up this animal, but I did it so that you would get the idea. I mean, it is quite a scary picture there. See, that? Uh, that's a hedgehog. A hedgehog kangaroo. While reading, always wear thick reading gloves. I like to read in these snazzy oven mitts. Oh, yeah, you know those big gloves you use for lifting hot things out of the oven. And then number three, danger boots. I'm sure you, you'll have noticed how heavy this book is. I mean, it's not... Not that heavy. Now think how much it would hurt if you were so shocked or terrified by something in it. For example, the bus stop part, the, the bus stop part that's coming up later. Ooh. I mean, we'll get to that in a future episode, maybe. Uh, imagine that the, that the book slipped out of your reading gloves and landed on your foot. Oh, so you were like, ah, and it, and it hit your foot. Ow! Always wear protective footwear when reading. 
Danger Boots will save you from the most common brabbies, and that's short for book reading and browsing injuries, including cookbook foot. I mean, I guess cookbooks are quite heavy. Atlas ankle. Oh yeah, atlases are even heavier than cookbooks. Encyclopedia knee, and the worst one of all, dictionary toe. Drop a dictionary on your toe and I'm certain the sound you make won't be a word in that book. Oh, like you, you'll be like. Bruh! So they are some of the dangers of uh, of reading. But I mean, I mean, we'll take them on board, Dr. Noel. Thank you very much. But we will also continue reading. We're going to continue with, I should say, I hope you're remembering all of this important information because we're going to have a quiz at the end of this just to make sure that everyone's been paying attention with this vital dangerology we're going to take a look at uh, dangerous pets right now dr noel he doesn't like most pets at all choosing the correct pet he writes is a very important decision get it right and you have a new best friend get it wrong and you've bought yourself a one-way ticket to chompy town if you know what i mean what i mean is that it could eat you the most important question you need to ask yourself about any new pet is, yes, it looks cute now, but what will it be like in a year? With a new kitten, for example, how can I be sure this cat is an ordinary cat and not a baby tiger? Well, how to check if your cat is a tiger? Ask yourself these three simple questions. One, is my cat much bigger than everyone else's cat? Two, does it have very large teeth and sometimes try to eat the juiciest neighbours? Three, instead of meow, does it go rah, so loud that saucepans rattle and pictures on the walls go sideways, except when there is a programme about tigers on the television when it watches its friends silently with tears in its eyes. It's, it's watching like this. <laughs> if you answered yes to any two of these questions, then your cat is definitely a baby tiger. You should immediately telephone your local zoo. Immediately. And while you are waiting for them to arrive, Dance. Oh yeah, he thinks that uh, dancing is a good way of uh, scaring away tigers. That's classic Dr. No. Is my dog a baby wolf? Does it howl at the moon? Does it really like chickens? Are chickens going missing in your area? Does your dog sometimes sneak out at night and have lots of feathers stuck to it in the morning and smell like chickens? Newsflash, then that is not a dog. Is my pet fish a baby great white shark? Does it get really, really excited when you eat a sandwich in front of it? As we've learned already, sharks love sandwiches. When it's hungry, does it swim along at the top of the water with its fin sticking out? Has it ever smashed out through its tank and eaten a member of your family? Uh, if yes, then hire an old sea captain or a shark fisherman to catch it before it chomps anyone else. Is my hamster a baby hippopotamus? This is another very good question. Is it much too big for its hamster wheel? Is your hamster bigger than you? Does it eat all of its dinner with one, one mighty chomp like, and then burp louder than a motorbike? Then I'm pretty sure that is not a hamster. You will look at, there's a, there's a beautiful picture of it. See, the, there's a small hamster there, and then there is a very large hamster, also known as a hippo. Examples of some safe pets. See, Dr. Noel doesn't mind pets. He just thinks that they should be very safe. A house plant, for example. It won't chew up your furniture or wee in your bed. A house plant is like a dog that doesn't move around or need dinner or do anything except grow very slowly. Warning a banana plant is a bad idea though. Chimps could hear about it and come to live with you. I mean, that's what... Two, avoid human eating plants and also be careful of the armchair cactus. <laughs> that's, a, that's an armchair cactus there. A cactus shaped exactly like an armchair. A, a cabbage. That's another safe pet. An excellent alternative to a pet. I love cabbages almost as much as I love safety. Dr. Noel is obsessed with cabbages. He just mentions them the whole time. And three, my pet of choice is a stone. It doesn't get hungry and you don't ever have to let it out for a pee. Stones require very little looking after. Add some googly eyes and take it out for a walk whenever you like on a roller skate. This is my pet stone, Dennis. There's, there's a picture of a... Of Dennis, right there. 
<laughs> so that's a not a bad introduction to dangerology and Dr. No. I mean, that's that might be something fun to do. Think of a very safe pet that you could have. Something, I mean, it could be a stone. Maybe you could do a picture of a very safe pet and you may be taking the safe pet for a walk. That would be fun. And you can send it to me. You can set, get a grown-up, send it to me at my Twitter or at my uh, website. That will come through my email. That could be that could be something we could do. Any dangerology questions you have, you can put them in the comments below this, and I will try and answer them in the next episode of this. This, I mean, we'd better think of a name for the. We'll call it Danger Desk because I'm at a desk and danger is everywhere. But the last thing we need to do is make sure that everyone was paying attention. So. We're now going to have a quiz based on the stuff that we've covered today. So let's begin with what is a park danger that could happen while you're feeding the ducks? Do you know? Say it right now if you know what it is. If not, rewind this and go right back to the start again. And what should you always check before you sit down in a chair? What's that? I mean, is that question too hard? I'll give you a clue. Something quite hot. <laughs> what is the most dangerous kind of book? It's a good, I'll give you a clue there as well. Yeah. How do you check if your puppy is a wolf? What's a, what's it? What's one way of checking that? I mean, is that question too hard? I mean, you could take it out, just point it up at the moon. That would be a good, yeah. I mean, I've answered my own question there. And if it goes, oh, then it definitely, okay, how do you know, what's one way you know if your cat is a tiger? Can you remember that? Well, I hope you got all of those right. <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, get to work, uh, draw me a picture and then get someone to send that picture in and we'll have a look at some of the best ones uh, the next time. And in the meantime, well, I hope you're having a nice time. Hope nothing dangerous going on. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, thanks so much for watching, you guys. I've been David O'Doherty and uh, I'll turn this off now, but hopefully see you soon. Bye.